So we're going to be taking a look at how forms work in React. To do this, I've created a new component called MyForm, and I'm rendering it inside of app.js over here. So right now I just have a div that says forms, nothing special going on. And the first thing that I want to do is change what's inside of this. So what I want to do is display a text field so we can start typing some text. If you're familiar with HTML, you know we can use the input tag to do that. So now over here I have my text box and I can type and that's awesome. Now this is what's called an a uncontrolled field because we're not storing what the user types inside of React right now. So usually in React you want to do what's called a controlled field where you do store what the user types inside of React because this allows you to add some stuff later on like validation and whatnot. So to do this what we can do is we can store it inside of our state. So I'm going to say state here and now let's say we want to capture the user's name with this input field. So I'm going to say name and by default it's going to be an empty string here. So now as the user types, what I want to do is I want to put the value of this input field in this state here. And we can do that by using this onChange prop. So this onChange prop takes a function. Um, I'm going to say handle change. And in this function, I'm just going to say console.log called. So that way we can see when this is called. So I'm going to pass this dot handle change. So what's going to happen is every time I type here, this function gets called. So here's me typing and you can see it, it was called 19 times. This is probably 19 characters. And a cool thing about this function or uh, how this works is it's going to pass it a parameter. And this parameter is called an event. And we can actually get the value of what the user typed through the event. We can say event.target.value. So if I do that, I'm now printing exactly what the user typed. So you can see as each one of my keystrokes happens, this function gets called and we console log the current value. And we can see me slowly type out this random word. All right, so the next step is to just update the state. So now I can say this.setState, and we're gonna say name is equal to event.target.value. And I have a little bit of typo there, there we go. So now as I'm typing, we're now storing the value inside of the state. Now there's one last step to get this to work and that is to pass the value in here. So I'm now gonna say this.state.name here. So now whatever we have stored in the state is gonna be reflected in this input. So if I said Ben as the name, we now see Ben there. So now the way to change what the user has here or is typing, is to update the state. And so every time I'm typing now, it's updating the state and then it's being reflected inside of the input. So that is how an input field works and how you keep track of that inside of a state. Now we're gonna look at some other elements. So another element you may wanna use in a form is a text area, and this works exactly the same way. And by the way, guys, this is kind of an interesting little thing. I never thought to do this, but we can look at it now because it just came to me. So notice how these both say bin in it. That's because it has it here. So both of these fields, um, they have the value of the name. So as the value changes over here, um, it reflects in both of these inputs because they're both using what what's the value of the state bin, right? And we can console.log this.state.name and we can see as I type this out, we can see it changing. So whatever I type here or whatever is stored in the state is gonna be reflected in both of them. So that's kind of cool. And so we're using this on change here. Um, and by the way, this works exactly the same way it does as the text area. As you can see, it takes value in an on change and we're just, it just looks different basically. And so every time I type into the text area field, um, the on change is called and uh, it's updating the state. And then that state is changing it for the input as well. Okay, so that's our two fields there. And if we wanted to, we could create a separate one. So we have name. Uh, let's do favorite pet, favorite pet. And we could say this dot state dot favorite pet. And now we can create another handle change for that. So I can say handle change favorite pet, and this will update the favorite pet. So we're going to call handle change favorite pet. So now these are two separate fields. This is storing, taking the state uh, called name. 
that value and this is favorite pep. So as I'm typing, it's updating that. And as we're typing, it's updating that. Um, and we don't need a console log to stay anymore. All right, so we have two fields so far. Um, the other field you may want to use is a checkbox. So let's say uh, type is going to be checkbox. So that's how you create your own checkbox. Here we go. And again, this is an uncontrolled field right now because we're not passing in the value and the on change. Um, now checkboxes work slightly differently. And that is you want to use the checked instead of uh, on change. So I'm now going to say, um, let's call it remember me. And this is going to be false at first. So we're going to pass in this dot state dot remember me. So here's our checkbox. Um, it doesn't like it right here because we haven't set the on change. We're going to fix that in a second. Um, and let's see if this works how I think it will. If I set true, um, you'll notice this checkbox is now checked. So again, keep in mind when we're doing this, what we're changing is the state. And anytime we change the state, it's reflected down here. So if I try clicking this and changing it, nothing happens. And the reason for that is the state is not changing. So we need to be able to change the state. So let's create another one of these. Handle change listeners. So the checkbox, instead of value, it's called checked, but it still uses an on change listener. So I'm referring to these as listeners. And that's what I mean by uh, on change here. So it's basically when I call it a listener, I'm saying it's listening for the user to type. And when they type, it's calling the function. So I usually refer to that as like a listener. All right, so I'm gonna call this handle check. And let's just console log to see when this is called. And we're gonna say handle check. And we can see it works in the same way. Every time I click it, it's now gonna get called. But of course, it's not seeing a change right now because we're not updating the state. Now the event has access to what the user clicked. So I can say this.state and we can say remember me and I'm gonna say this.state, or sorry, event.target.value. So notice we're using value for all of these so far. Um, and I actually, I don't think it's value. I think you use checked there. Yeah, okay. So value is not what you wanna use here. You wanna use checked. And now we can uncheck and recheck the item. And we're gonna say false there by default. So now when the user clicks on this, it's going to update the state and then reflect on our checkbox. All right, so that is input text area and checkbox. The last one I wanna go over is a select field. So I'm gonna just make this inside of another div so it goes to the next line. So what a select field is, we're gonna have some options here. So I'm gonna say Mr. Um, miss, and then Miss. Um, and I guess let's do Misses as well. So here I have some different options and I can pick which one I want like that. So uh, that is how select fields work. So right now, again, it's uncontrolled. How do we make it controlled? Well, we can do that by, again, setting the value here. Um, and again, we can set the value of what this is, but we're just gonna keep it the same. So here I'm gonna say, um, I forget what this is called. I don't think it's called a salutation. Um, I'll just call it title. And I'm gonna say Mr. is what the default is. And I'm gonna say this dot state dot uh, title. So now the default one is gonna be Mr. If I change the default one to Miss, Let's copy that one and paste it here. The first one we're gonna see is miss there. All right, so now we want to um, handle the change on this select field. So we're gonna say handle select. And this works in a similar manner. So it's gonna take an event and we can say here, and it's gonna be event.target.value for this. And we can say the title. So we're gonna update the title field whenever the user selects one from the dropdown here. So again, right now we haven't added this, but as soon as we do, we're gonna say on change this dot handle select. 
So now I can click on this and it's going to change the title for that user. All right, so that is the four fields that you'll mostly be using in forms. The last part is how do you submit a form? So right now we haven't gone over how to use the form tag. So I'm just going to show you with a button. So I'm going to say submit and we can say on click. And here I'm going to say this dot handle submit and our handle submit up here. All we're going to do is we're going to console dot log this dot state. So our state now holds what the value of the form is. So we say Ben, we could type some more words here. We can check this. We can pick which title we want and then we can submit it. And that's going to take a snapshot of the state and we can see all the current values that are stored in it. And then if we wanted to, we could do whatever we want with these values. We could send them to another component. We could send this to an API. Um, but that is how you do forms in React. Now this is a very basic version of forms. We pretty much just went over how you do these four components and how you use the checked and on change in the value uh, parameter and how it reflects in the state. In tomorrow's video, I want to do a more in-depth on how forms, we can make this form even better and use the form tag in HTML instead of just using a button on click.